Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia News Line. I'm Skyrim Zimik. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Thursday, the 1st of April. India launches biggest COVID-19 vaccination drive yet amid surging cases. Row over opposition leader deepens between Pakistan's PMLN and PPP. And Nepal's PM Oli must seek trust vote by April 5, say CPN Maoist Center. And now for all the details. India began vaccinating hundreds of people above the age of 45 on Thursday in its biggest push yet against a surging coronavirus that has hit the highest daily count since early October. The world's second most populous country aims to immunize 400 million people after expanding the program which had been restricted to the over 60s and people with serious health conditions. India on Thursday began vaccinating hundreds of people above the age of 45 amid surge in coronavirus cases across the country. India now aims to immunize 400 million people after expanding its immunization drive, which had been restricted to the over 60s and people with serious health conditions. The centre government, in a bid to exponentially expand the vaccination, has decided to keep all public and private sector COVID-19 vaccination centres operational throughout April, including gazetted holidays. मुझे पूरा विश्वास है कि उनके इस सेवा भाव से उनकी कोशिश से महामारी इस भारत को छोड़के उसको जाना ही पड़ेगा हर हालत में उसको जाना पड़ेगा और वो चली जाएगी मेरा पूरा विश्वास India began its inoculation program in January this year, which was focused on health workers and then the elderly. The country in the second phase of the program started vaccinating its 45 and above year olds with comorbidities. It also shipped millions of doses of the vaccine to neighboring countries and then across the world as part of a diplomatic initiative to win friends. Voting for the second phase of the assembly election in India's Assam and West Bengal was held on Thursday. The two states have emerged as key battleground for Prime Minister Narendra Modi's BJP, which seeks to put an end to the 10-year rule of the Trinamul Congress in Bengal and retain power in northeastern Assam state. Voting for the second phase of polling was held in parts of India's Assam and West Bengal states on Thursday. A huge turnout was witnessed in northeastern Assam state, where Prime Minister Narendra Modi's BJP, Bharatiya Janata Party, looks to retain power. The main contest is seen to be between the alliances led by BJP and the Congress Party. The results of the three-phase poll in Assam an eight-phase election in West Bengal will be declared on 2nd of May. अच्छा लगा मेरा first time है मैंने दिया है first time तो मेरे को अच्छा ही लगा. Winning states is key to controlling the upper house of the federal parliament, whose members are elected by state assemblies. In West Bengal, the BJP is looking to extend its national domination and dislodge one of Modi's sharpest critics, Mamata Banerjee the state's current chief minister and head of the Trinamool Congress, which has ruled the West Bengal since 2011. BJP's top brass, including PM Modi and Interior Minister Amit Shah, have been relentlessly campaigning in the state, flanked by local leaders poached from the Trinamool Congress. In news from Pakistan, the ongoing tussle between Pakistan's two major opposition parties has intensified as Pakistan People's Party has declared that it would not accept PMLN leader Shehbaz Sharif as the opposition leader in the National Assembly if its senior leader Sayed Yusuf Raza Gilani did not get support in the Senate. The ongoing tussle between Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz and Pakistan People's Party has intensified 
after Pakistan People's Party declared that it would not accept Shahbaz Sharif as the opposition leader in the National Assembly if PPP leader Syed Yusuf Raza Gilani was not supported by PMLN in the Senate, the upper house of parliament. PPP leader Syed Naveed Kamar made the statement amid reports that PMLN and Jamiat Ulema Islam have decided not to recognize Gilani as the opposition leader and form a new bloc on opposition benches in the Senate during a meeting between PMLN senior vice president Shahid Khakan Abbasi and JUIF secretary general Molona Abdul Ghaffoor Hadri on Tuesday. Tuesday night. The two major opposition parties, PPP and PMLN, which are part of 10-party opposition alliance PDM, have expressed serious differences since early March over the issue of resignations, which PDM believes has become indispensable for launching a decisive political movement to oust Prime Minister Imran Khan. The issue also forced it to postpone the scheduled long march against the government on March 26 earlier. Moving on. The U.S. State Department's 2020 country reports on human rights practices has highlighted significant human rights issues in Pakistan. It raises concern over extrajudicial killings and enforced disappearance of Pashtun, Sindhi and Baloch human rights activists. The U.S. State Department in its 2020 country reports on human rights practices has highlighted significant human rights issues in Pakistan, including unlawful or arbitrary killings by the government and forced disappearance of Pashtun, Sindhi and Baloch human rights activists. The report released on Tuesday said there was a lack of government accountability, fostering a culture of impunity. Security forces in Balochistan continued to disappear pre-trial terror suspects along with human rights activists, politicians and teachers. 45 individuals had disappeared and assailants had killed 15 persons in seven districts in July alone last year, the report said. It further said that there were numerous media reports of police and security forces killing terrorist suspects in police encounters, also mentioning the killing of Karachi University student Hayat Baloch in cold blood in August 2020. Baloch, Pashtun and Sindhi human rights activists have long raised concern that people from their communities have been targets of military operations, ethnic stereotyping and abductions by the Pakistani state and its security forces. The US Special Envoy Zalmay Khalilzad met with senior Taliban leaders, including Mullah Baradar on Wednesday, to discuss provisions of the US-Taliban peace agreement, which includes the withdrawal of US forces from Afghanistan. The meeting comes as the deadline for troop pullout ends on May 1st and UN-led conference on Afghanistan is expected to be held in Turkey soon with representatives from all sides of the conflict attending. The US Special Envoy Zalmi Khalil Saad met with senior Taliban leaders including Mullah Baradar to discuss provisions of the US-Taliban peace agreement including the withdrawal of U.S. forces from Afghanistan, informed Taliban spokesman Mohammad Naeem on Wednesday. The meeting comes as the deadline for the withdrawal of U.S. forces from Afghanistan ends on May 1 and a UN-led conference on Afghanistan is also expected to be held in Turkey soon with representatives from all sides of the conflict attending. Last week, the U.S. President Joe Biden, in his first press conference, said it will be hard to meet the May 1 deadline for getting troops out of Afghanistan for tactical reasons. The Taliban, on the other hand, has warned that delay in American forces' presence in Afghanistan will be seen as a violation of the Doha Agreement and that all future responsibility for the continuation of violence will be on those who violated the deal. In news from Nepal, leader of Nepal's CPN Maoist Centre Party, Dev Prasad Gurung, has said that Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli must seek a vote of confidence by April 5. Gurung in the parliament on Wednesday said Oli was required to seek a vote of confidence within one month of the Supreme Court's verdict that annulled unification between the CPN UML and CPN Maoist Centre. Leader of Nepal's CPN Mao's Centre Party, Dev Prasad Gurung, has said that Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli must seek a vote of confidence by April 5. 
Gurung in the parliament on Wednesday said the PM was required to seek a vote of confidence within one month of the Supreme Court's verdict that annulled unification between the CPN UML and CPN Mao Center. The Supreme Court had on March 7 annulled the unification of the two left parties. The top court in its February 23 ruling had also said the government must run for five years and the parliament could be dissolved only when the lower house failed to give a new government. Nepal entered into phase of political stalemate after Oli recommended to dissolve the parliament in December last year, but making a landmark verdict, the country's apex court ordered the parliament to be reinstated. As the parties under alliance have returned back to their former name, none of the party holds complete majority in the parliament. With the temperature soaring and natural water sources drying up amid heat wave conditions, authorities in India's Gir National Park have constructed artificial water points for thirsty lions and other animals. Around 600 Asiatic lions live in the sanctuary in India's Gujarat state. Forest officials in India's Gir National Park have set up over 450 artificial watering points to give thirsty lions respite from soaring temperatures as a heat wave grips the country. The artificial ponds and troughs are filled by a variety of methods, including hand pumps and by using solar and wind energy, the park's chief conservator said on Wednesday. Around 600 Asiatic lions live in the 850-square-mile National Park and Sanctuary in India's western Gujarat state. There are more than 450 water points in the water point. This water point is filled with water. These water points are filled with different types of shape and different size, so that they can drink water with small and small and small and small and small. Temperatures across India have skyrocketed during the heat wave. Deadly heat waves in South Asia are likely to become more common in the future, with the region's exposure to lethal heat stress, potentially nearly tripling if global warming isn't curbed, a study published last week by the American Geophysical Union said. Hindu devotees gathered at the banks of River Ganges in India's northern holy town of Haridwar on Thursday to take a holy dip on the first day of the month-long Kumbh Mela or the Pitcher Festival. Hindus believe water of Ganges has the power of healing and bathing in the river during Kumbh absolves people of sins and brings salvation from the cycle of life and death. Devotees gathered at the banks of River Ganges on Thursday in India's northern holy town of Haridwar to take a holy dip on the first day of the month-long Kumbh Mela or the Picture Festival. Devotees, several of whom believe Ganges water has the power of healing, said offering prayers at the Kumbh was important, but precautions are also necessary amid the surge in COVID-19 cases. The festival is held only once every 12 years. Organizers have said here more than 150 million visitors are expected, as many Hindus believe bathing in the river during this period absolves people of sins and brings salvation from the cycle of life and death. Keeping in mind the influx of visitors to Haridwar town in April for the Kum and the rising number of coronavirus cases, local authorities have ramped up testing for people visiting from other places. Visitors to Haridwar are now required to provide a COVID-19 negative report and rapid antigen testing booths are also set up at the borders. That's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.